Hi, this is Joey O'Neill from Sound Systems Incorporated over in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And we are currently over at Westside Free Will Baptist Church in Johnsonville, South Carolina. And I'm going to take just a few minutes and put some thoughts together about how to operate the audio mixer or the sound console we've installed at the church for the benefit of the sound system operators who were not here at some training. What I'm going to do is give you a general overview of the mixer and tell you what uh, what functions and why we did it for this particular setup. <clears throat> this church is pretty straightforward. Uh, we have about 13 inputs from the stage coming into the to the audio mixer, and they are labeled uh, channels 1 through 13. We have four additional audio technical wirelesses that we added during the installation. We have electronic drum kit on stage. We have playback left and right of a CD player, a iPad, iPod, dock, and also an auxiliary input. They all play through the same two channels. Then over on this section, we have the existing seven wireless microphones that the church uh, owned. We also have a congregation mic that's tied into the very last channel, channel 32, and that feeds DVD recordings and CD recordings. My goal today is just to give you a, if I, if I run through a channel and tell you what everything does, that'll make it easier to understand. Doesn't, as long as we know what one channel does, it doesn't matter how many, how many channels we have left and right. <clears throat> so, I think I've got some music I'm going to play over here just to give, use for demonstration. Gotcha. Okay, good. Now, let's, I'm going to use this channel as my, uh, as my demonstration channel. First of all, we have left and right control on this section of the board, and this labeled as house, and that takes care of the two line array speakers we have uh, suspended from the ceiling. This is feeds a CD recorder, and this feeds a DVD recorder. I'll come back to that in just a few minutes. Let's talk about what the channel does. First of all, we have sliders uh, on the mixer, and that lets us increase or decrease anything that's playing in the music uh, playback unit in the main sanctuary. So in other words, any of these sliders here control what we hear through the main speakers in the sanctuary. Now I'm going to turn that down for discussion purposes, and I'm going to tell you what every knob does all the way up, up and down the channel. Right above the slider control is a white button called PFL. Well, first of all, I set the playback of the CD player up in left and right channels left and right or A and B and the reason we did this is many of the churches use what they call split track where they would have vocals on one side and instruments on the other side. The beauty of that is that you could turn up the instruments and then turn down the vocals or cheat a little bit and add a little bit of the vocals through the system depending on how large the choir was. So this would be standard stereo setup if we're listening to a stereo CD then both of these would, op would operate as normal or this would be instruments and this would be vocals if we were doing a split track. That's pretty important once we get them into another section. So therefore, sliders control the volume going into the house system. Next is a button called the PFL button. This means pre-fade listen. Uh, I don't know if my video is going to show it, but there is a headphone jack right underneath here. And if I push these two buttons, it lets me hear through my headphone. Here's my volume control for my headphones. It lets me hear independently what's going on in that one channel. I can come over here and I could listen to wireless number four, wireless number three, wireless number two, wireless number one, and so on. When all of these PFL buttons, all these white buttons are up, I'm hearing exactly what's going out through my main speakers. So it gives me a good indication about what my speaker system is listening to in the, in the congregation. Next, I have a mute switch, which obviously does just that. It gets rid of the gets rid of the audio, but if you've noticed, if you can see in the video, I still have a small uh, LED indication that tells me that something is going on in this channel. Now, almost on cue, it looks like way over here on wireless number two, I've got a little signal that keeps kip kicking in every once in a while, and that probably is a noise from a wireless microphone. So while I'm doing this demonstration, I'm going to unmute channel 26 to see if I hear some static noise uh, because I keep seeing something going on in this channel. That tells me something's happening in that channel but currently I have the channel muted so I wouldn't be able to hear anything. 
So I may interrupt my... <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> That's exactly what it's doing. There's a wireless microphone that has a little bit of RF or reception problem. And you can see by the yellow control there that uh, we have quite a bit of noise coming through there. So that's a very good indication about what the signal indication does. That tells me something's going on in the channel, but I may or may not necessarily want to have it come through the system, just like I did not want that happening there. Okay, back to my music playback channels. Unmute, slide control. PFL means I can listen to that channel through the headphone. Mute switch, like we've already gone through. And then three buttons right across on top of the mute switch says 1 slash 2, 3 slash 4, and L slash R. If I push the 1 slash 2, then it sends whatever's playing in this channel over here to 1 and 2, which are currently my DVD recorder. I would like to have whatever I'm turning up or down go to my DVD recorder, so therefore... 3 slash 4 means it's coming to 3 and 4, and that's going to feed my CD recorder. What The whole purpose of that is to let everything that comes through the sound system go out separately to a DVD recorder and go out separately to a CD recorder. Therefore, the LR switch, which means left and right, sends that audio that's playing right over here to the LR, and that goes out through my main sound system. Case in point, my music is playing. If I come over here and I take them out of the L and R, then all my noise goes, all my music goes away. Doesn't matter what I turn up, but it's kicked it out of the house system. And now I'm back in. Meaning that the L R button needs to be pushed on every channel at all times for it to come out through the main sound system. The only exception is a choir microphone we have down in channel 32 that does not want to play through the system. We're only putting the congregation mic in here just to feed the recording section. All right, right above that is a pan control, left and right. It becomes irrelevant because we're not set up in stereo. We're actually set up in dual mono. Above that are two controls. They say auxiliary 5 and auxiliary 6. These are actual effects processors. Delay, echo, reverb. If I had a soloist singing and they would like to have a little bit of reverb on their voice, these two coincide with two screens on the effects processor screen. Currently, we're not using them, and currently I do not have anything assigned to them. Auxiliary four and auxiliary three also do not have anything assigned to them. They're for future growth, so they're irrelevant, along with five and six, irrelevant. But auxiliary one and two are, for example, this is my music coming, playing through here. That's playing through the sanctuary. I have an independent monitor speaker up on the platform that we are calling stage speakers, which are just basically two floor wedges sitting on the left and right side of the pulpit. If my music is playing this channel, I can turn it up in the house system, but then I can come up here and independently select how much of that music plays through the stage monitors that's on stage. All systems are independent of each other. I'm going to turn that off, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn up auxiliary number two, which means I'm sending sound only to the piano and the drums, which have two little hotspot monitors. That's completely independent of the stage monitors and completely independent of the house system. So I can turn everything off, and now I can come up here and I can add just to my stage monitors. Now, that takes care of the auxiliaries. Just to review, auxiliary one are the stage monitors. Auxiliary two are the piano and drum hotspot. Auxiliary three, four, five, and six are not used at this time and are set up for future growth. Next are three blue knobs, and they're called uh, low, mids, and highs. And basically, that's just tone control if I'd like to add more treble or bass. Over-exaggerated here take treble away, add more bass, do anything I want to do with the track. You know, some people bring in homemade things or manufacture stuff. And then the last control on this, uh, on these particular channels, they, they do two or three things. The mic gain is irrelevant on this setting, but these two gain controls are very important. 
Gain control allows me to increase or decrease how much sound comes into each channel. Now it's very important to remember that when I make an adjustment on this gain control, not only, watch this, see just the slightest turn makes considerable difference of the amount of volume or the input into the channel. But when I make an adjustment on the gain control, d increasing or decreasing, I'm also increasing or decreasing it in the monitor on the stage, in the monitor by the piano and drums, and in the house system. So I have to be very particular about what I use with the gain control. It becomes particularly important with microphones, because if I have someone standing up on stage with a microphone, and I come up and start increasing their gain control, well, I'm also turning up what they hear in the monitor speaker, which could induce feedback or some kind of squ uh, squealing feedback modulation or anything like that. So I have to be very careful about the gain control. I would suggest that once we get to a happy medium with the gain control, that they're uh, not even adjusted anymore. And you could use the level controls and the mute switches. Now, when I push the mute switch, sound goes away in the house, in the monitors, in the monitors, everywhere. When I open the mute switches, everything happens. Okay, I think that's a, uh, that's a general overview of how uh, the mixer operates. Like I said, as long as we know what one channel does, then the rest of them should fall in place. I'm going to grab uh, wireless microphone number one and turn that on. I've got number one, which says Graylin. And if I look, this says wireless microphone number one. Check test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to mute it, and I'm going to speak, hey, 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 hey. As I talk, the green indicator, I mean the yellow indicator, tells me there's signal going on. I can unmute it. Check test one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six. I can push the LR button up and it takes it out of the house system. You can push it back down, check one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Now I'm back in the house system. And for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna pull it down and I'm gonna pull it down here. Now that I'm speaking in wireless channel number one, I can come up here to my stage monitors. Hey, check, test, one, two, three. This is my voice coming through the stage monitors on the platform. Testing one, two, three, four. This is my voice coming through the piano and drum, little small hotspot monitor, completely independent of each other. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two, three, four, five. And now we're back in the sanctuary sound. Test one, two. Okay. I'm going to touch that slightly, which mutes it, and unmute it. I'm going to hold it for two seconds, and it goes away. And that's a general overview of the mixer at uh, here at Westside. Uh, any questions, I'm Joey O'Neill at Sound Systems Incorporated in Myrtle Beach. I can be reached at 843-602-5883. Our store number in Myrtle Beach, 843-293-5883. Thanks.